Hello, this is No Samuel, and today I would like to share with you uh, about the principle of vaccination uh, and also what are you know, the history of you no know, vaccination. And uh, saying that, we'll see in detail about the type of you know, the immunity and the different type of you no know, vaccine. And in the meantime, we'll try to see what does a vaccine and a vaccination mean. So we'll see in this part is. So vaccination is really very important. So what does it mean a vaccination? So when we say you know vaccination, it is just the administration of an anti an agent specific, but relatively it is harmless and antigenic component that is uh, inactivated in the individual in vaccinated individual which can induce you know, a protective you know, immunity against you know, the corresponding infectious you know, agents. So in practice, the term vaccination and immunizations are often uh, used interchangeably. So with that, these vaccinations are really uh, highly effective methods for preventing uh, virus infectious you know, diseases. And uh, when we administer a vaccine, and normally vaccines are really very safe and, and uh, serious adverse reactions are very uncommon. So when we administer a vaccine, it's relatively they are safe. So, so that routine immunization program will protect most of the world of not children from a number of infectious diseases that previously caused millions of days in each year. But after a, a vaccination, vaccination by itself reduces the morbidity and the mortality in the child, but also in the adult population. And another most important part is for travelers, for example, the vaccination can offer the possibility of avoiding some infectious diseases that might be encountered Abroad. So when someone is traveling from one area to a certain area, so there might be a lot of you know, diseases which are you know, endemic you know, in that part. Uh, uh, so that uh, first, before you travel, you need to know uh, some information about which diseases are endemic in that area. And really, those diseases are, are they really vaccine preventable or not? So if there are no vaccine preventable and that is are endemic in that area, before you travel to that area, you need to take you know, a vaccine. So travelers need to know about you know, the principle of you know, vaccination as well. So another part is, uh, therefore, these satisfactory vaccines have not yet been developed against several uh, of most life-treating you know, conditions. So what does it mean a vaccine? So vaccines, let's have a look at you know, what a vaccine and its history of you know, vaccine as well. So the word vaccine originates from the Latin uh, variola vaccinia, which is uh, a carpox, which uh, the Edward uh, Jenner demonstrated in uh, 1998, uh, uh, could prevent you know, uh, small poxes in the humans. So today the term vaccine applies to all biological preparations, which is in a practice from the living organism. And then that will enhance the immunity against the disease. And either uh, it can also prevent, in some cases, we can also use as a prophylactic you know, vaccines, or we can use also as a therapeutic you know, vaccine you know, to treat you know, certain diseases. So vaccines can be used uh, I, I, either for uh, as a prophylactic vaccine, or it could be a therapeutic you know, vaccine. Uh, so therefore, this vaccine is we can administer either in a liquid form, or it could be by injection form, or orally, or intranasally, or it could be by a, any other uh, routes. So these vaccines are really composed of either the entire disease causing the microorganism, or in some cases, it might be from uh, some of you know, its components. So how it is really constructed, there might be different you know, ways for having you know, a vaccine. It could be from the living organism. So we need to have a living organism and then that needs to be weakened. There might be you know, some process you know, for that through cultivation. And then 
we need to alternate you know, that vaccine or we may just you know, do a genetic you know, modification. So by that way, we just reduce you know, the ability of you know, that pathogen to cause a disease. So such kind of uh, preparation is called alternation. So, uh, and the other way it could be, uh, we may have you know, a whole organism and that has been inactivated you know, by the chemical or it could be by thermal or it could be by other way. So in this case, this is you know, in an in inactivated way or it is a killed you know, vaccine preparation. So in that case, we just you know, directly kill you know, the whole organism. So the other part that we would like to uh, have a vaccine is it could be from the component of a disease uh, causing organism. So th that may be directly from a specific you know, proteins or it could be from the polysaccharide or the nucleic acid. So as of you know, this, we can prepare you know, a vaccine as well. And some of you know, the bacteria may also produce you know, toxins. So they are toxin producing you know, bacteria. So in that case, we need to produce a vaccine for, uh, for them as well. So in that case, in order to prepare you know, a vaccine, we need to uh, inactivate the toxin of uh, the toxin producing you know, bacteria like uh, for the case of you know, titanus. So by that way, we can prepare you know, a vaccine or from the leakage or from the conjugation of the polysaccharide to a proteinus. So in that way, we can prepare a vaccine. So let's have a look at you know, the history of you know, vaccination. So the first attempt to, to, pre to prevent uh, a disease by using a disease-causing organism against itself are reported from the 7th century in India, where the Buddhist monks, they drank a uh, snake venom in order to develop an immunity against the snake bite. So that was another you know, first attempt to, to prevent you know, certain diseases. But later on, in the second in the millennium, the virulation concept comes. So the practice of virulation is just means the practice of inoculating you know, the dried you know, pustule of you know, the smallpox, which is you know, caused by the viral virus from the sick you know, individual into the healthy individual. So by that way, we need to prevent you know, the healthy individual from developing you know, a disease. So that is the concept of you know, violation. And such practice was uh, spread to East China and to the West, uh, to the Turkey and Africa and to the, to the Europeans. So that is another you know, concept of violation. So in, uh, in the 1798 in England, the Edward Jenner, uh, Jenner published the result of his experiment on a vaccination, the practice of inoculating the cowpox virus, which is closely related to the small, uh, the human smallpox you know, virus, that is the same like in the viral vaccinia, to prevent you know, the smallpox in the case of the humans. So the term vaccination normally came from the vaccinia virus, that is, and then this practice becomes you know, widely uh, uh, popularized. So later on, at the end of uh, the 19th century, the Louis Pasteur began to apply the concept of vaccination to other diseases after that, after Edward. So what he did is he just tried to demonstrate the harmful nature of the disease causing organism that could be weakened or it can be alternated in the laboratory. So, so that he first demonstrated the effectiveness of a vaccine against a chicken cholera and an anthrax in animals before developing his vaccine against rabies for use in human in uh, 1885. So later on in 1886, uh, in the USA, Daniel and the Smiths, they tried to demonstrate vaccines could be produced not just from the live organism, but also from the killed disease causing organism. Uh, so their discovery will lead to the subsequent development of the inactivated you know, vaccine against you know, several human diseases. So the inactivated uh, vaccines were developed after uh, the innovation of uh, the innovation by uh, the Smiths and the Daniels. And later on, in the early 20th century, it was discovered that some diseases were caused not by the bacteria themselves, but also by the toxin they produced. So that inactivated toxin acted like a vaccine by providing you know, protection against you know, these uh, toxin-induced diseases. 
So these vaccines are known as toxoidify, like the case of notitanus. And then after that, by the end of the 20th century, the as part of the innovation to the development of a several new method of producing a you know, vaccine, including by the recombinant organism or by the conjugation of the polys acquired to the care proteins or by the assembly of the virus like no particles. So this is another new method for the producing of a vaccine. So with that uh, saying a little bit about the history of you know, the vaccine, let's have a look about the immunology and the vaccine preventable diseases. So what does it mean the immunity by itself? So here we need to understand how a vaccine works and, the, uh, and also the foundation of the recommendation of for, for their use is really useful uh, to understand the basic function of the human immune system. So that the immunity is by itself, when we say immunity is the ability of uh, a human body to tolerate the presence of the material in the genus to the body and then finally to eliminate you know, the foreign substances. So that such kind of discriminatory ability is aiming to eliminate the foreign substance, which is you know, performed by a complex system of interacting you know, different you know, cells, which is called the immune system. And then, for example, we may have most organisms uh, like the bacteria or a virus or a fungi, these uh, organisms, they can be identified as, as a foreign. So for them, uh, those foreign or, or for those foreign uh, pathogens, the body will try to have an ability to identify and also to eliminate these substances. And then finally to provide the protection from the infectious diseases. So immunity, it could be generally very specific to a single organism, or the immunity could be to a group of a closely related organism. So in that case, we say that it is a cross protection. So the immune system, which is developed a defense against an antigen, which are a substance that can stimulate the immune system. So this defense is known as the immune response. So in this case, uh, it might involve with the production of a part molecule or there might be a specific you know, cells. So if it is you know, a part molecule, obviously this is uh, the immunoglobulins or the antibodies, which are really the major component of the human immune system, which are produced by the B lymphocytes or by the B cells. But whereas for the case of you know, specific you know, cells, like for the T lymphocytes, which are induced by cell mediated immunity system. So these are you know, the two most important uh, uh, systems in the immune response to make you know, a difference against a you know, certain pathogen. And depending on the nature of you know, the pathogen, some of them may be directly producing an antibody or some may be uh, directly to the lymphocyte uh, productions, TCA lymphocyte productions. So with that, let's have a look at the two type of immunity. There might be two basic, the two, two basic mechanisms for acquiring immunity. We may have another you know, passive immunity, or we may have the active immunity. So for that, for the passive immunity, is it is just uh, the protection by the antibody or antitoxin, which is you know, produced by one animal or a human and then that will be transferred to another, that is what passive immunity is. So the passive immunity, it, they will provide you know, an immediate protection against you know, a certain infection, but that protection is really temporary. And the antibody uh, will be degraded during a period of weeks to immenses, and the recipient will no longer be protected. So it will stay you know, for a very short period of time. It's, it will not stay for a long period of time, like for the case of you know, the active immunization. So the most common form of you know, passive immunity is that, uh, which is an infant, which is receiving uh, its immunity from the mothers, from the mothers. So that is in you know, a one way. So that could be one of the ways. So the most common is uh, that one. So the antibody, uh, which is you know, very specifically, is a class of antibody, which is referred to the IgG. Uh, 
uh, are transported across the placenta primarily during the last one or two months of the pregnancy. So in the last one or two months of the pregnancy, through placenta, the IgG will be transferred into the, the infants. So by that way, the infant got no protection. So another way is uh, the active immunity, which is another you know, protection, which is you know, produced by the person own immune system. It's not like transferring someone's antibody to uh, the another, like, like the case of uh, the passive immunity. But in this case, the protection is produced by the person's own immune system. So that the immune system is stimulated by an antigen to produce antibody mediated or cell mediated immune system. So that the person will try to produce either antibody mediated or it could be cell mediated immunity, depending on the nature of another pathogen. But for the case of the passive immunity, we say that it is very temporary. The antibody will stay for a short period of time. But for the case of active immunity, it usually lasts you know, for many years, or it could be in some cases for a lifetime. So one way to acquire an active immunity is uh, to survive infection with a disease-causing uh, form of no the organism. That is in you know, a one way to have. Uh, or it could be by uh, immunization, immunization, active immunization by itself also, or vaccination by itself also is an active immunity. So another part is there might be different you know, factors that might directly influence the immune response to vaccination. So it may be the presence of the maternal antibody, maybe maternal antibody may interfere with uh, with the vaccination or the nature or the dose of the antigen can also directly influence our immune system to certain vaccination or even the route of administration or the presence of the adjuvant that we use because adjuvants are very important to improve the immunogenesis of a vaccine. So the presence of the adjuvant by itself directly can influence you know, the immune response to certain vaccination as well. Or it could be from the host factor, the age of the people, because, for example, the young age and the old age, their immunity is totally different. So, for example, for the case of you know, the old people, there is immuno or immunosenescence. That means the immunity will be degraded as the age increases. So that directly affects you know, the immune, uh, immune response to certain uh, pathogens or the nutrition that we eat or the genetic or the coexisting diseases, they may also directly affect you know, the immune response. So host factors are also very important. And uh, the other part is, the last part is, let's have a look you know, the different you know, classification of a vaccine. Normally, there are many types of you know, vaccine by now, but the two basic uh, type of vaccines are the live and uh, the alternated one. So when we say you know, the live or the alternated one, vaccines are derived directly from the wild you know, virus or directly from the wild you know, bacteria. So these wild viruses or bacteria, they become, uh, they become weakened in a laboratory by uh, usually by repeated you know, culturing. So we need to go some uh, processes. We need to culture them repeatedly. And then the bacteria or the virus directly, the wild virus or the wild you know, bacteria becoming you know, automated or it be it's becoming you know, weakened. And then later we can use it for a vaccine purpose. That is called you know, a live vaccine, or it is called an alternated vaccine. So uh, the second one is the inactivated you no know, vaccine. But in this case, these are not alive, uh, like the case of uh, the alternated you no know, vaccine. But uh, so this cannot replicate as 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 unlike the case of the uh, live you know, vaccine. So these vaccines cannot cause you no know, disease even in case of an you know, immune deficient you know, person. So for example, immune deficient you know, persons, we cannot give them a live vaccine because the live vaccine can cause a disease uh, in some cases, that isn't the drawback of the live vaccine. So that uh, these inactivators are very safe uh, to be used in the immunodeficient you know, persons. So they cannot cause a disease. So that is you know, one of their uh, positive sides. And the inactivated antigens are less activated by the circulating antibody uh, than uh, 
are alive and antigen so that uh, so they may be given when antibody is present in the uh, in the blood so normally we do, we may have you know, different types you know type of you know vaccines uh, but the, the basic one that we have seen is the live and the the inactivated one but by now we, we do have also the recombinant you know, sub unit you know, vaccine the toxoid vaccine the conjugate uh, polysaccharide protein vaccine RNA vaccine, uh, the DNA vaccine. So we do have a different you know, type of vaccines and for different you know, pathogens or for different you know, diseases, we have different type of you know, vaccine. For example, measles, methus, rubella, they are alive, attenuated. And for some uh, influenza, pneumococcal, and pol uh, pneumococcal and polysaccharide, we have the inactivated one. And the recombinant subunit is for, for example, for hepatitis B, and for toxoids are like for the case of tetanus and diphtheria and for conjugators we have uh, pneumococcal and meningococcal hemophilus influenza type b so these are you now the, the diseases and in respect of you know, the type of the vaccine they have so for today we have seen already a short introduction about the principle of a vaccination, what a vaccine means, what is a vaccination, and what is the history of vaccination, and also looking uh, the different type of immunity and different type of you know, vaccines. So with that, I wind uh, today's lesson, and uh, thank you for uh, having a good me.